Eli. Ni eh, Said mainkan kita lagi ah. Kau boleh tolong kita tak? Aku tak tahu aman. Bos aku bilang kalau dia tangkap aku Jamie lagi sekali, aku akan kena lubang kerja. Alah, please ah. Kita betul-betul nak main Black Knight ni. Okey. Satu lagu je. Lagipun lagu trash metal kan laju. Mesti cepat habis punya. Ayah, ayah buat apa kat sini? Saya perlu beli baju baru. Sekarang? Ya. Buat apa? Nak pakai baju baru untuk audition. Ayah, ayah tak boleh suka-suka hati tau datang sedulur Ali. Harapkan Ali ambil hub dia daripada bos. Kalau Ali kena buang kerja macam mana? Siapa yang nak bayar bil air, sewa, makanan? Macam ada yang tak kena? Uh, tak kena? Ah, kat depan sana tu ada lagi. Uh, yang lebih baik tapi <laughs> mahal sikitlah. Ya, apa ni ya? Kenapa pun sirak nak rumah. Ya, apa ni? Ai cari apa? Skrip saya. Skrip apa? Nak buat audition untuk persembahan budaya. Ya, mana ada lagi persembahan budaya ya? Saya dah keluarkan baju ibu kamu. Pesan dia, pakai untuk persembahan budaya nanti. Ibu dah meninggal tiga tahun lepas, ya? Memburu gajah di hutan batik adalah hasil karya tahun 1988. Dia ada motif gajah, motif hutan, dalam hutan. Kemudian ada sungai, kemudian ada beberapa gambar wayang kulit sebagai melambangkan orang-orang yang sedang memburu. Yang sebenarnya adalah kemanusiaan antara manusia dengan binatang dengan alam. So, alam pun memberi imajinasi kepada manusia. Binatang pun hidup dengan alam. So, manusia juga dengan binatang. Jadi, tiga subjek tadi ini, wayang kulit atau manusia tadi, binatang dengan alam, harus ada.
Datuk saya adalah uh, Pak Dalang atau pencerita yang sampai sekarang ini menjadi inspirasi saya berkarya dalam bentuk lukisan ataupun arca. Sewaktu uh, bercuti di kampung di Johor, di rumah dia ada beberapa poster wayang kulit. Kemudian dia akan turunkan dia akan bercerita dengan cucu-cucu dia termasuk saya yang dari Singapura dia akan bercerita pasal wayang kulit cucu-cucunya diajar dengan cara mengenal watak-watak dia ada perempuan, ada lelaki, ada yang jahat, ada yang baik The storyteller is of course my mom, my late mom, and she tell me all kind of story. You know, when she's sewing also, she tell me stories. When she's cooking, she tell me stories. When she cook uh, ubi kayu, ubi, you no know, tapioca, and then she will tell me, okay, during war, this is what we eat, and everybody plant tapioca behind the backyard and all that. And when she sew wedding costume, she will tell me why the bride and groom must wear the same because they are considered as king and queen. So she tell me, tell me and tell me, uh, I register it here, you know. Last time we don't see movies, right? We, we, there's no YouTube, there's no nothing. But our mother's story is really story from her heart. It's about life, about life in Singapore. Certain story that is fable, you know, like Si Tanggang, Filia Paiti and all that about good daughter, good son. Uh, that one she uh, relate to me based on what her late grand, her late mom told her. We register until now and I'm teaching it and I'm telling it to my grandchildren now. My earliest memories is of my late maternal grandfather telling all of us grandchildren stories. Every day, there'd be stories. He came from South India, so he brought his family stories. He spoke to us about his home, his ancestors, his family, his memories as a young boy growing up in a village in Kerala, and all the things that happened there, the different characters in that village. He also brought the great epics like the Ramayana and Mahabharata, all the animal stories from the Panchatantra and the Jataka. So, the storyteller figure in a family was somebody who explained to you about religion, about rituals, about traditions, festivals, celebrations, what to do when somebody dies, what to do when a baby is born, why you pray to a god with an elephant head, why certain foods are consumed on certain days, why you fast, why you eat with your hands, why it's raining. Are the gods up there, you know, washing all their pots and pans and that's why it's raining down here below the heavens. So everything that happens to us as human beings has a story behind it because that's how we make sense. And for children, we need to make sense of the universe. And so this role that an elderly person or a knowledgeable, wise person in community played was way beyond sheer entertainment. Given your father's age and illness, for him to still remember his old job is very good. Has he been taking his medication on time? Hmm. Sometimes he forget, but I try to remind him. I know it's not easy taking care of someone in a condition like your father's. But try to be patient and try to appreciate the things that he still remembers. Because in the end, it will all go. Limo blaster dua tiga lia. Saya tak makan plaster, tak minum tiga lia. Oh masuk ayah. Ayah kan selalu makan perata plaster dengan tiga lia. Tidak. Saya selalu makan kosong dan minum tiga ais. Salim. Hey, lama tak jumpa. <laughs> Ada problem apa apa dengan makanan? Saya mau kosong dan teh ais. Oh. Bukan ini. Dah 20 tahun hari ini juga dia tukar selera dia. Uh, Tambi. Kita kondo bete eh. Kosong roti yo, teh ais yang kondo. Eh? Kau macam mana Salim? Eh? Selama ni rehatkan rumah ke? Rehat? Eh, 
Mana aku ada masa untuk rehat? Aku mesti pergi banyak tempat untuk buat persembahan. Di Singapura, Malaysia, Indonesia. Aku tak buat persembahan untuk kecil-kecil. Hmm. Hanya yang besar-besar saja. Hmm. Dan minggu depan, saya nak buat audition untuk persembahan budaya. Dan nak tahu siapa akan hadir dalam persembahan budaya itu. Presiden Singapura. Memanglah. Engkau kan banyak famous punya dalang. Apa macam Uncle? Eh, no need lah. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle. It's getting worse. Eh? It must have been hard for him all these years. No one watches Wayang Kulit anymore. So he hasn't been earning anything for a very long time. I remember seeing him going around selling off bits and pieces of his Wayang Kulit equipment. But he's a proud fellow. Eh? <laughs> Still talking about the old times. <laughs> ah, uh... Oh, it's medical fees. Hmm. No need, Uncle. I'm working already. You're fine. Thank you. I go first. Ayah, jump kita balik. Basically, wayang kulit comes from two words, which is wayang and kulit. Wayang means a performance or a play. Kulit is skin. So it's a shadow play. Uh, basically, when you have performed wayang kulit, you have the characters. At the back of the screen, there's a light, and it's performed at night. So the audience, they can watch either from where we are, considered backstage, now, where you can see the colours, you can see the characters, or you can just see black and white, which is the shadow. The most important person in wayang kulit is the dalang. This puppet master controls everything, every aspect of it. Tersebutlah sebuah kisah dahulu kala. Kisah seorang putra mahkota bernama Putra Rama. If it's a simple story, you can have three characters. But if it's a full story, sometimes you can even have up to 260 characters or more. From good, evil, king, queen, princess, animals and all that, all into one story. And then after that, you have the musical instruments, the gamelan ensemble. So definitely shadow puppetry or wayang kulit, you know, it's centuries old. And that is one important way of telling stories and transmitting long epics and legends. It is said that the origins of wayang kulit comes from the island of Java. But you also find storytelling using shadows and light and using things that are made out of animal skin or hide. You find it in India, you find it in China, you find it in all of larger Southeast Asia. Variations that are very specific to the geography and the culture. So shadow puppetry is historically told over a durational period. So it can take seven days and seven nights, and it's something that people pop in and out of. So as a child, maybe you'd go off to play and you'd come back, so you'd catch snippets. And as you grew older into adulthood, the same story would carry different sets of meaning. You're beginning to see life stories, and as you grow older, you appreciate the epic for its deeper nuances. Hunting Elephants in a Batik Forest by Tumadi is the perfect kind of artwork for me to activate my stories. The moment I saw that artwork, I looked at the Wayangkulik characters and they seem to be journeying. You know, you see the sun, you see the landscape and there's a mountain that's much taller and bigger behind them. They're in movement, they're very dynamic. So, are they two male characters from the Ramayana? Could it be Lakshmana and Rama seeking for something on a quest, going somewhere? Maybe they need to get to the mountain, maybe at the top of the mountain where the sun is shining bright. It's a symbol of finding something, or reaching or achieving something, or maybe even resolving a problem.
when one looks at the painting itself, the shape of the elephant may not be immediately clear because it is surrounded by the cacophony of all the other batik patterns surrounding it. But this is perhaps where the artist intends to invite the viewer to take a closer look. Dumadi Patri himself is very much influenced by the motif of Wayang Kulit in his work and he also painted a lot in batik as a medium. And this is perhaps primarily due to his heritage as a Javanese. Memburu hutan di hutan batik adalah karya yang mencabar. Maksudnya, saya menggunakan banyak bahan-bahan batik-batik perca atau lebihan-lebihan batik dari arwah mak saya menjahit. Dia akan potong benda kain-kain batu itu disimpan. Saya memilih watak wayang kulit tadi sebab dia ada karakter masing-masing. Dia punya keilmuan aja ajaib dia. Dia punya bentuk dia pun satu bentuk yang saya rasa uh, bukan seronok dilihat tapi keunikan dia ada. Yang membuat saya buat karya berbentuk wayang kulit tadi adalah satu timbul satu identiti ataupun jiwa saya dah dah, dah rasa oh Tumadi ini yang kamu cari ini yang harus kamu kembangkan dan ini yang harus kamu majukan okey ada dua elemen batik dan wayang kulit tadi secara perlahan-lahan dia mungkin akan dan akan menjadi bahan untuk saya uh, berkarya Ya, wayang kulit dan batik dan inilah yang saya akan uh, mungkin perjuangkan atau mempertahankan atau mempertengahkan budaya Jawa saya. Batik means so much to us. When you receive a new baby, you know there's always sarong. We call it buaya, not the sarong where you put the baby put to sleep. The sarong cuddle the baby, you know, it's warm, you know, it's nice. And then pelikat, the young boy going puberty, they go to the sunat, circumcision. The sarong cover and the, the boy will feel comfortable. And of course, marriage. What is marriage without the sarong? Everybody wear beautiful sarong, whether it's bate or printed. And of course, for death. Batik lepas is also used to cover the dead body. We need all this sarong. And this sarong is really so useful for our daily life from birth to death. Aku tengok eh, kalau macam ni, Syed out tau. Dah banyak practice dia, Mak eh. Macam Eli, kau boleh tolong? Sepuluh hari seluruh Indonesia, bro. Kita akan keluar TV, radio. Kita akan jadi famous, bro. Kau fikirkan dulu. Tapi ingat, Li. Bukan hari-hari tau. Band Singapore, metal, dapat tour dekat Indonesia. Ya? Ya? Pukul berapa sekarang? Saya tertidur lah. Dah nak masuk pukul 6 dah. Ayah lapar ke? Nanti Ali pergi bawah beli makan. Mesti lambat. Dia sepatutnya sampai sini pukul 5.30. Dia bilang ayah tu ke? Audition untuk persembahan budaya itu tak lama lagi. Kami perlu berlatih. Kalau nak buat persembahan untuk Presiden Singapura. Ayah, Cik Rosli dah lama tak main gamelan ya? Merepek. Dia yang cakap nak sampai sini pukul lima setengah. Baik, saya telefon dia. Ayah. Hello. Ayah. Dah cakap dengan Rosli? Ha? Eli? Ha? Dah cakap dengan kamu? Hello, Mr. Lim. Ya, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. 
Yeah, it won't happen again. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Alright. Dapat cakap dengan Cik Rosli tak? Ayah. Cik Rosli dah lama tukar nombor telefon ayah. Kalau sekali lagi ayah call Mr. Lim, dia akan call polis. Saya faham tak? Siapa Mr. Lim? Saya nak cakap dengan Rosli. Kasih saya telefon tu. Ayah jangan. Ayah dah makan ubat ke belum? Kasih saya telefon ayah tu. Ayah jangan stop lah. Cik Rosli dah tukar nombor. Dia dah lama tak main gamilan. Ayah pun sendiri dah lama tak main wayang kulit. Hei, audition untuk persembahan budaya tu ada. Tak ada lagi audition, tak ada lagi persembahan budaya ayah. Barang-barang wayang kulit ayah semua mana? Semua dah jual kan? Ayah ingat tak? Kamu merepek apa ni? Ha? Ini? Ini kan barang-barang saya? Barang ni? Yang Ellie buat bila Ellie masih kecil lagi. Ayah tolonglah jangan macam ni. Bertahun Ellie kena korbankan untuk menjaga ayah. Ayah faham tak? Ya. Yeah. Ya. By the 1900s, right, you already had a Chinese community, an Indian community, and all the other communities that have traveled and come and made their homes in Southeast Asia. So the kind of stories that would have been told would have been stories that migrant communities brought and stories of the indigenous population that were already living in islands in the peninsula and in the larger part of Southeast Asia. So you would have like an amalgamation of narratives. Chinese Puppet Theatre is a woodcut print by Lim Mu Hui that was completed in 1966. It's a scene that depicts the backstage of a Chinese Puppet Theatre. There are a group of musicians that are playing their instruments. There are a whole host of Chinese puppets that are hanging and various figures sort of mending to the puppets and also sort of taking a break. And in many ways, the depiction in the artworks that we see today, scenes that are no longer familiar to us, remind us of a time where a different way of perhaps taking a break and finding pleasure in the storytelling and the shared sort of heritage of folklore and mythologies really existed in public spaces back then. Japan其实是普鲁手，它的木偶只是专门做给他们的雕王新加坡的雕王的庙很少。雕刻的木偶就跟我们就差不多，可是他们讲的话是不一样。他们的音乐是潮州的音乐来唱我就在台上跟他们帮忙咯以前他们做工一个人一天才三块钱工钱花完了省上的五毛钱他就给我了那我读书一天才一毛钱他给我五毛钱不是很大我就五毛钱可以花五天了那我每天读书十二点回来去台
第二种就是求神，自己的孩子生子平安，家庭好事，答谢神人，这叫不北斗戏。第三种呢，就是叫有些庙的开新庙，要需要我们去开关，就是第三种的开关庙。Hello, si Amina ke tu? Ni saya Eli, anak Cik Salim. Uh, ni saya nak tanya, Cik masih lagi ada kontak tak dengan Cik Rosli? Jangan lupa bawa skrip tu Rosli. Saya perlukannya. Ah, tak ada masalah. Saya akan bawa skripnya tu nanti. <laughs> Cik Rosli. Kenapa Cik Rosli bilang ayah saya yang Cik akan datang nanti? Eh, jadi Eli nak ayah Eli tahu perkara yang sebenarnya? Ah, kasih tahu dia lah sendiri. Eli kan tahu ayah Eli sakit. Eli, di sini Cik meniaga. Maaflah, Cik tak sepatutnya cakap begini. Tapi kalau Eli nak dengar nasihat Cik, dari dulu lagi sepatutnya Eli dah bawa ayah Eli ke rumah orang tua-tua. Eli punya kehidupan sendiri. Hmm, dah bawa ayah Ali balik. Tapi ingat jangan kasih nombor telefon cik yang baru ni pada dia. Ayah. Jom balik. Baiklah abang Gamilan. Jangan lupa bawa skrip tu. Ah, jangan kau kita jumpa lagi. Terima kasih. Lama-lama. <laughs> Ayah, jom makan, Ayah. Saya belum lapar. Lah. Alahai, si tua ni Selalu lambat. Lah. Baik, saya telefon dia. Lah. Ayah, jangan, Ayah. Tolong jangan call dia lagi. Tapi dia lambat. Jangan. Kasih saya telefon. Ayah nak call, kan? Nah, Amit, pergi. Pergi telefon sana. Eli! Tak ada bunyi pun. Buka! Eh, hey, siapa kunci pintu ni? Buka! Eh! Hey, siapa kunci pintu ni, ha? Saya dibesarkan di kawasan Lim Chukang Road di mana uh, saya berteman ataupun jiran tetangga saya kebanyakannya orang-orang Cina. Waktu kanak-kanak, saya memang seronok melihat persembahan Chinese Opera. Di sana kita akan melihat bermacam-macam warna pakaian. Kemudian ada Bukan pakaian, ada dragon dia, ada lilin yang besar-besar, warna-warna. Tapi saya sono. Walaupun saya tak faham benda tu, tapi benda tu dah semacam sebagian daripada permainan waktu tu bersama-sama dengan jiran anak-anak jiran ni, sama-sama menonton sambil makan es krim. Wow, that's a lot of people. 
กำลังพูดสู้เดียวอีสีกิปิงเด้งกิเกตตาชีวิตจิวีจิริโซใส่เสียงแก้มบนไอ้ชูมีสักวากังอันนี้ค่ะคิดการโซใส่ปุ่นชีจินเจียงอินหัวนางอ่ะจินจักยาสิจินจักคุยรอกไอ้ดีจีจินยังหัวหินเดียวนี่ฉันจะคอยคิดถึงพระเอกทุกคนที่ฉันรักมากที่สุดฉันชอบดูพวกเขาทั้งที่มีการแข่งขันและเพลงแอโครบาติกและแสงสว่างที่ดีที่สุดที่ทำให้ฉันมีความสุขมากที่สุดบางเพลงแอโครบาติกมีการแข่งขันที่มีความสุขมากที่สุดบางเพลงแอโครบาติกมีการแข่งขันที่มีความสุขมากที่สุดบางเพลงแอโครบาติกมีการแข่งขันที่มีความสุขมากที่สุดบางเพลงแอโครบาติกมีการแข่งขันที่มีความสุขมากที่สุด Uh, my aunt and I would just stand there and watch it. Uh, sometimes when you're tired, you just squat down there. So I said, "We don't want to go to the hospital. We 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 don't want to go to the hospital. ไอ้เดิมซิมความเป็นหอดิเทกชิ้นนี้ชาซีเองพี่หงพี่เสือกเสือกเสือกเสือกไม่ใช่ว่าพี่ไทยปิ้งโจ้ยโจ้เกี่ยวอย่างเนี้ยไม่ได้เอ็งวันเนี้ยตั้งแต่สิเหตุนั้นเป็นปีกัสเฉลี่ยสิงคโปร์ไอ้คิดไปหนสมมติในไอ้สิว่าไอ้สิเพียวหอยดิบใช่ชิวเย็นชิวโอ้ยอ่างเงี้ยอ่างเงี้ยว่าเพื่อให้จิ้มพีเนี่ยนะโอ้บุ๋ยเด็กว่าตั้งแต่ว่าม่าม่าก็เสียจิ้มเป็นชอดที่ขี่รถที่สิเพียวเก่งจริงเก่งจริงบุ๋ยเอาหึ The atmosphere was very uh, noisy and lively. You, know? you, you see all the aunties, they will be fanning themselves because there's no air con and it was very hot. People selling drinks, peanuts and what have you, carrying baskets, helping you to, to buy their stuff. พักก็เลยเสียงแก้มอุศสายอินเย่นี่สายตัวหลักนี้แล้วอ่ะอะปอกิ่งนี่จะปิ้งเดี๋ยวตัวไอ้หนึ่งนี่อันที่สี่นี่แล้วเอาสีนิ้วเปอร์ล้างไอ้หัวหน้าจู่ยี่ตัวสอดสีอยู่สีนี้ดิ金牛叫千万难。Seventh month, there were lots of street operas because they perform all this for the invisible audience. Of course, the live audience were the most visible one, except for the front row seats. And then on the eighth month is the Mid Autumn Festival, and on the ninth month there was also a lot for the Nine Emperor Gods Festivals, and a lot of other gods and demi gods festivals, like the Monkey Gods. I also remember they, they held lots of all these operas. I remember there were. Three categories of stories, but they are always related to, of course, Chinese history. The first category of stories are mostly related to emperors, princes, and the princesses in the imperial palaces fighting each other for jealousy and so on. Di Nihua was a very famous, uh, popular show. So it was about a princess who sacrificed her life so that uh, she would not be made use of by the conquerors of her dynasty. Another category are those very sad love stories. For example, the butterfly lovers, Yang Zhu, 
And another category which I loved best was the fighting scenes, and, uh, lots of acrobatics. For example, Madam White Snake, the Magic Lantern, Pao Shi Tuan, Pao Lantern. Those had a lot of uh, demigods and gods fighting each other. There were so many shows to watch. Because I grew up in the 70s and my youth was in the 80s, I actually feel very lucky that I am the, like a last batch of generation to have seen the old Singapore. That means the 70s and before, when Singapore was a city of kampongs and villages. And the new Singapore, which was uh, from the 80s onwards. That's why I painted Jalan Singapura 1, 2 and 4. So Jalan Singapura 1 and 2 showcased the kampong when there were zinc roofs and houses and people lived their lives actually on the streets. That's why you can see the Malay weddings, and children playing in the, in the school field, even eating, uh, marketing, all were done on the street. And then Jalan Singapura 4, which showed the same place, but it's transforming. People were moving out and the farmlands at the back have all been raised and the HDB were being constructed, new roads were being constructed. So with, you know, becoming modern and becoming a more developed community and society, and the grandparents maybe not being with the grandchildren, there was this disconnect between the person who knew the stories and who could tell and the potential listeners. If you're talking about the 70s and the 80s in Singapore, most of the books that children and young people read were things that came from the West. So the fairy tales that all of us were exposed to were from the Brothers Grimm or Charles Perrault. And these were the kind of stories that we knew more than our local legends and folk tales. And that's simply because of accessibility. So things that were published were in English. The people who were deciding to publish certain stories were not local. So all of us grew up with a strong diet of Western fairy tales and folk tales and very minimal or negligible diet of local folk tales. So there again is another disconnect. And then here we are wanting to reconnect with our culture, our roots and what were the narratives that our people told each other. And that's why there's so much interest now in art, to connect mythology, legends, to adapt, to reimagine some of these old traditional stories, to contextualize them and put them in a contemporary setting. I think adaptation is a timeless approach uh, used by many artists. So if you look at the works of Dumadi Pachi, you can see that his treatment of colour in particular differ from how the traditional form of Wayang Kulit may appear. Pantai Parang Kritis adalah karya tahun 2014. Karya tersebut menunjukkan dua aspek, ada tradisional dan modern. Yang tradisional tadi kita masih menggunakan watak-watak wayang kulit tetapi lebih moden kepada saya menggunakan watak patung-patung wayang kulit secara tempelan saya menggunakan warna-warna yang cerah atau belakang dia dan tidak menggunakan uh, laut sebagai warna biru tapi menggunakan warna kuning kemudian ada warna merah sedikit saya melihat Itu adalah satu karya percobaan 
sama ada masyarakat terima atau tidak terima, itu terpulang. The kind of wayang kulit that we have been exposed to here draws very strongly from these two Hindu or Indian epics, right? The Mahabharata and the Ramayana. In essence, it's a story of adventure and love. So Rama's wife Sita is kidnapped by Ravana, who is the king of Lanka. He's depicted with ten heads and sometimes called the demon king. And while Sita is held captive, Rama, together with his brother Lakshmana, go on this journey from the north of India all the way to the south, to the tip, crossing the ocean to get to the island of Lanka to save Sita. When we told these stories to our younger audience, to schools, they are not able to relate. So we had to change. We had to adapt the characters that we have. For example, Prince Rama became Prince Sangnila Utama. So with this prince, we were able to tell the story of Singapura. Then it became more relatable to the audience. Ah, I can relate to this story. So with this, we expanded. Why not bring in a little bit of uh, modern superheroes? So we had the best of, I think, both. So traditional and also contemporary Wayang Kulit. I hope you are happy here with me. In Malay, we said, supaya tidak sesat jalan. If we have a strong foundation and knowledge of our rich culture, heritage, whatever we want to do, we know the boundaries. So that boundaries is very important. Yes. Fusion, but tastefully fused. So as storytellers, we are always adapting. There is a story that existed before, but we are the tool, the instrument or the vehicle for that story to travel through. What's important is the story. You know, I've been doing this for almost 20 years and I always have adults coming and telling me that that's the first time they've heard the story of how Singapore got its name, Singapura, from the city, Pura, and Singa, Lion. And that, of course, is a journey of Sang Nila Utama, coming across the sea and coming to this island and discovering it. And didn't know that there was a legend behind Bukit Merah or Red Hill, and how there used to be an attack of swordfish, and a little boy solved that problem by suggesting the creation of a barrier made out of banana trunk and the little boy was murdered by jealous people from the royal court. And the blood spilled from his body, his innocent body, stained the soil red forever. So I think the work of storytellers as performing artists is very important and having enough opportunity for everybody in Singapore to access stories and storytelling. You come, you listen and you imbibe. And then you go away with this knowledge about Singapore and the legends and mythologies affiliated with this island, which is part of a bigger region and then you have a better understanding of the people that we are descended from. Excuse me. Salim and friends? Yes, we are the ones doing Wayne Kulit. Wait around here for your turn. Hi, thank you. Ali! Hey! <laughs> Siapa mereka? Ayah, ni kawan-kawan Ali. Cik Rusli kata dia tak boleh datang. Jadi dia orang boleh tolong kita. Ini bukan pemain gamelan. Ya, tapi ayah, dia orang boleh main muzik tu. Macam mana boleh macam ni? Okay, Persembahan wayang kulit mesti ada muzik gamelan. Kamu pergi telefon Cik Rusli, suruh dia datang sekarang juga. Okey ayah, dengar. Ayah ingat tak macam mana ayah jaga Ellie masa Ellie kecil dulu. Masa kau kecil, kau memang suka wayang kulit. Ellie sekarang dah besar, dah dewasa. Biar Ellie yang jaga ayah. Ini giliran Ellie pula. Ayah percayakan Ellie, okey?
A já? Kde jsi byl? Liar. Inilah tanah airku. Ibu bapakku tinggal di sini dan moyangku juga hidup di sini sebelum mereka. Hari ini aku akan menghalau semua manusia-manusia yang sudah mencuri kediamanku. Nama ku Joyo. Itulah tanah-tanah kebunku. Aku bekerja untuk istri dan anak-anak. <laughs> Aduh, apa terjadi pada sawah padiku? Siapakah yang merusakkan padiku? Akan aku tangkapnya dan aku akan ganyang. Ah, ayo, tangkap gajah itu! Wah! <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.